Hey guys, what's going on? This, okay. Okay, let me just explain a few things. Today, we're not doing a reaction. Today, I'm gonna sit down and explain a little story to you. A few of you guys in my last video that I done about the paranormal, you asked me to do the story time of the time I lived in a haunted house. So that's what I'm doing today. If you do enjoy, then give this video a huge thumbs up. If you don't enjoy and you're not into this kind of stuff, then no problem at all. I just really couldn't be bothered to sit down, put headphones on and react to something today. I just wanted to speak and just chill with you guys. And I also want to show you my new haircut. My hair was so dead i needed to get it cut i went to the hairdresser i was like can we fix this and they was like hmm your hair is really dead the only way we can fix this is by cutting it short or not cutting it at all and just try and treatment it so i was like okay just cut it cut it short but let's find a style so i found this style and i'm still trying to get used to it it's all like short at the back short on the side like it's shaved on the side actually and all cut here so let me explain to you guys the last video i done loads of people were asking me i said halfway through the video that i've experienced some paranormal stuff um from my old house and you guys are interested in seeing what i had to say and seeing what i actually meant and what i experienced in the paranormal world of life in my old house mm -hmm. so i lived in this house since i was I was like two, I think I moved in, maybe even younger than two. I was a baby. I was a really baby. I was a baby baby. And I we moved out when I was 23. How old am I now? Yeah, 23. So I spent a long time in that house. And in that, in basically 23 years of living in that house, I experienced a hell of a lot of stuff, which was at first creepy. Well, it's saying that all the way through, it was from creepy to calming to creepy to calming. It was a very unusual experience and not a lot of people really believed. Not a lot, I, like, I never really believed in the spiritual world or in paranormal activity until I started taking notice of what was going on. So a little backstory, before I even, before I personally even experienced anything, my mum um had experienced a load of stuff in the past in that house um i was still really young i couldn't i never had a memory at this point i couldn't remember none of this but she said she'd experienced like lights going on and off tvs turning itself on uh, she had like a big stereo that would turn itself on after being turned off doors would open um she would sit there and it would look like someone was walking past the hallway because we had like two doors and then we had a hallway and people she said the people see it looked like people were walking past like a shadow was walking past um she'd have friends over and they'd say the same thing that it looked like someone was walking past the the um the doors and another creepy time my mum took me to the opticians once when i was i must have been about five something like that she took me to the opticians again i personally can't remember this this is what i've heard of her and the optician said where do you live like you know when you go to an appointment and they're like your name address and all this kind of stuff she said the address the guy like literally apparently went white and she was like are you okay and the guy was like i used to live in that house and it was one creepy creepy house so I think that's the point when my mum was like, okay, something needs to be done because it was, like she said, it was bad. Stuff would just go on and off. Like there was so much going on that she just wanted peace. It, it was our house. It was our, it was mine and my brother's place to grow up. She wanted a family home. You know, it was where she was about to bring up two kids and she wanted it to be happy. She's a very strong believer in like paranormal, spiritual and all this kind of stuff. So she wanted a nice free happy home clean home to be able to bring her kids up so that's what she, she ended up going and getting um i think she spoke to someone about it and they said to get mothballs i'm not i'm not sure what these are but she said to get mothballs and put them around in each corner of the room and it'll just clean the room tell the spirits and all that kind of stuff to go you know what i sound absolutely crazy right now but it, it stopped everything stopped and if you do not believe in the paranormal that is totally fine okay there are hundreds of reasons why any of this could have been happening it could have it could have literally just been coincidences there were multiple reasons why things like this happen i'm not saying everything like everything that we experienced were paranormal i'm not saying that everything that goes on in any way shape or form is paranormal i'm just saying I'm a personal believer because of everything that I've experienced. Now, if someone who doesn't believe and you lived in my house for a week, maybe you would believe, maybe you wouldn't believe what happened. But there was so much going on in that house that it was hard not to believe. 
apparently after she'd done that it was clean for a couple of years and nothing really nothing really kicked off nothing really happened um i'm not sure when it really started i'm really not sure when everything kind of kicked back off again but there were multiple times from the age i'm gonna say from about well i first started noticing stuff when i was i'm gonna say i'm gonna say about 12 13 ish i'm gonna say then that's when i personally started really experiencing stuff um so i remember my little cousin i had my little cousin over i was babysitting him he was literally i think he was one maybe even younger than one um and i was babysitting him and <laughs> um he sat there and stared at my bedroom wall now i lived in a middle room and it was it was a kind of creepy room i'll explain a few things about that room in a moment but i remember sitting there and he started waving at the wall and laughing now again there could have been multiple reasons why he was waving and smiling at a wall there could have been a million different kind of reasons on why he was smiling and waving at the wall i'm not saying that what he experienced was something paranormal but it was just a tad creepy so after that there'd be times where when i did have him he'd he'd just stare at the wall and giggle and you know it was it was weird it was weird but again, I'm not saying it's paranormal. I will explain the paranormal side of things once I get into this. So there's another time in the same room when I was a child. I must have been, I think I was about seven um, and I had a dream. OK, I'm going to say it's a dream because it just it it, it felt like, you know, when a sleep paralysis, you know, when you're in a sleep paralysis. I think I've explained this story before. I'll have a look on my channel. I'm pretty sure I've explained this story before. But you know, when you're in a sleep paralysis and you physically feel like everything around you is going real but it's 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 not real but it feels real so i pray i'm 90 percent sure i was having a sleep paralysis but i was laying there in my bed and i i literally remember it to this day it gives me the creeps okay i was laying in my bed i turned over looked towards like the, where the window is and where the wall is and there were the two there was two men standing in my room now growing up i believed that it was my father and his friend like i don't know why i just generally believed it was my father and his friend it wasn't my father and his friend like why the hell would my father and his friend be standing in like my room at the age of seven or five while i'm sleeping like it's staring at the wall it was not my father and his friend but it was a very creepy experience again not saying it's paranormal i'm just saying it was something weird and creepy after that um i really started playing into it or really started it got my attention i think when i was about i'm gonna say about 17. from the age of about 17 upwards that's when it really came that's when it really jumped out to me um i'd be sitting there making videos or editing videos with my headphones on my back against everyone and i'd hear someone come up to me and go katie like my name is so thing my boyfriend has also experienced the same thing it would be as if someone is calling you like this close to your ear. You turn around and there's no one there. It was it was creepy, okay? And it was like a man's voice. I thought it was my. It sounded like my like my dad multiple times or or Dan. I thought it was one of them, but it was never a female voice. It was always a man's voice. And it would be like this really deep, whispery but loud. Um, it was really weird. So we'd I'd experienced that, and it'd be like. Okay, that, that that was just weird, but I could have just been imagining things. I could literally just be crazy right now. There was a time that I went and made a cup of tea. Now, this was the time that really kicked everything off. This is the thing that really kicked everything off for me. This is the time that I was like, okay, something is going on inside this house. I was making a cup of tea. It was pretty late at night. It was about, it must have been about, I don't even know what time was it. It was late. It was like gone 12. I was making a cup of tea in the kitchen. I don't, don't ask me why I'm drinking teas at like gone 12 o'clock at night. I was a teenager. I was probably gaming or something. Um, I was making a cup of tea and I looked up and like in front of my sink. Okay, next to my, ke my kettle's here. My sink's here. And in front of these, I have a massive, I had a massive like bay window. It was huge. It was literally one of the biggest kitchen windows I've seen in my life. It was huge. And I missed that house so much. <laughs> um, and I looked up really quickly. It was it was really quick. It wasn't like it wasn't like we stared each other out. It was like a five second thing. Okay, guys, I had to have a quick background change. Um, my house just became full, and behind you is a mattress. So I just chucked this bed sheet over that just pretty much looked eerie. Of what we're doing. <laughs> 
so yeah um anyway yeah there was a time where i was making a cup of tea in the room um in the kitchen and i looked up and in front of me in the mirror in the window was some guy he was an old guy he <clears throat> had one of them you know like you know like them flat caps that old people wear like the like <sighs> i'll put a picture up he was wearing one of them a black all-in-one like um suit and like drape coat thing it was weird it was weird but he was an old guy we made like eye contact for like two seconds then i looked down looked back up and he was gone but it wasn't as if i was like looking down to make it wasn't as if i was looking down to continue like to look away it was as if i was literally in the middle of making this cup of tea looked up seen it and then just carried on then after i was like Oh my god like I, I didn't even make the cup of tea i legged it back upstairs and went to bed i did not make the cup of tea i was like i can't do this no i'm going back to bed um there were times where i've walked up the stairs turned behind me and there was a woman in my face there was loads of times where i've felt like i was being watched um constantly i'd feel like i have had i've got someone over my shoulder watching me um i remember one time that my mum said she's seen a hand almost coming round the corner of the door um there were loads of things I, one time i was laying in bed and this was not long before we moved um i was laying in bed and we had my, next to my bed was my wardrobe i'll try and find a video i'm pretty sure i've got a video of the layout at the time um next to my bed was the wardrobe and inside well not, i'm not gonna say inside but it sounded like someone was like knocking like like that at the wardrobe and it was loud it was right next to me and i could almost feel the vibration but i wasn't fully awake it was it was like i was awake but i wasn't like fully awake i wasn't about to get out of bed and go do stuff but i was like i was just waking up out of the sleep and i could hear this knocking and i was like what what the hell and i i like stood like not stood up i like got up looked around my room and there was no one there there was no dog in the room there was nothing going on my partner was out as next to me he was sleeping it was literally just me awake there was it was in the middle of the night and i just turned around pulled the blanket over my head and went back to sleep i think i learned not to be afraid i think that's one of the tricks that i did learn is not to be afraid um there were times where my the back bedroom now that was the most creepiest room the back bedroom was the creepiest room because it was it was as if you go in there and it was freezing cold there was there was no like there was the only energy that you could feel in there was as if someone was present without being present it was as if someone was there with you without being there with you in person but spiritually they were um you'd like the light we had a light in there and that would flicker there was loads of stuff that went on in that room it was just one hell of a creepy room you, the energies in there was just weird it was very very weird there was a time downstairs in the kitchen for about four i don't know nearly a year actually i was gonna say four months but it, now i think about it it was almost a year that the light in the kitchen would flicker okay it would flicker 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 i'd go to record it and it would stop there'd be no flickerings whatsoever but then i'd start flickering again and it it was it was weird it was weird so i tried to communicate with the light i was like you know if you are here flicker and it would flicker like but as soon as i got my phone to record it would stop um it was it was really weird but there was a time my brother was down we was all in the middle so we had like a middle room we had a front room middle room then the kitchen and we was all in this middle room playing a board game and in the in the kitchen was a stereo but it had an alarm clock on there and all of a sudden not an alarm yeah i think it was an alarm clock actually some some sort of clock in the stereo and we was all sitting there nice and quiet in the evening having a nice game of i think we were playing risk or something we was having a nice game of something and all of a sudden the alarm clock went off in the middle of the kitchen we went out the actual clock was switched off there was no like on button for it it was the off by the plug and it just went off for random reasons and then all of a sudden then all of a sudden it just switched off and that happened twice in a row two nights in a row and it was it was weird it was weird like before that my brother was saying like he didn't believe in anything the house like you know what we're experiencing is just weird things it's not actually paranormal um he didn't believe in it at all and then that alarm clock happened and he was like okay 
okay maybe i should believe in it maybe maybe there is something going on in in this house um i've seen i was standing at the top of the stairs once my dad was walking down the stairs and we had a picture frame right at the top of the stairs and it just flew down the stairs behind him now i was thinking to myself maybe it just fell off the wall but if it was fall, if it was the fall of the wall surely like we had a quite big landing before the actual start stair started from the picture if it was to just fall off the wall then surely it would just fall onto the onto the floor and not go anywhere but this thing instead of it just going down off the wall it literally just went straight down the stairs and i watched it with my with my eyes i was standing there watching it happen and it just flew down the stairs behind him it was it was so creepy it would it was creepy like things would go missing and we'd be like okay give them back and we'd shout you know come on little diamond which i'll explain in a moment and things would just start appearing again there was a corner in one of the rooms where the dogs would just go to and just start barking um and just like literally just stare at the wall and like the corner it was it was the door was there and the, the wall was there so the door like if the door was open they'd be in this little corner between the door and the wall barking and if the door was closed and they'd just be staring between like by the door hinges just barking um and wagging the tail or sitting and stuff like that it was it was definitely something going on inside the house and i really 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 wish that i got some sort of medium in before i actually moved from that house we done little experiments with um with dowel rods and they worked it worked like i don't know again there's millions of explanations of why this could have been happening there's a million reasons on why this could have been happening. I'm not saying that what we were experiencing was paranormal because who knows if paranormal is real, but it was something going on inside that house. There's also, I've done a video on this. There was also um, a little bit of a backstory on the ha actual house. Um, we found out that a little boy, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember how old he was now. I'm pretty sure he was five, around five, something like that he died he was living at the house and he died i found i ended up finding his grave i don't know why i had such a strong instinct to like i need to go and find this boy's grave i need to find out information on this boy and find his grave now i really didn't know why i wanted to do that there was no i had no like experience in doing this at all i just really needed to go and find this boy's grave i ended up finding his grave up to the graveyard which were lit which was literally like two minutes up the road um i'm pretty i'm 90 sure i've done this story Loxy, lock, rocks. so guys there's a there's a grave over there um if any of you hold on to me switch you back if any of you have watched my channel for a while you might have heard me mention it a couple of times about how my old house the one i've recently moved out of sorry for the wind um we used to experience some like quite haunted creepy things that used to go on there and i am literally standing about a, throne, a stone throw away from the little boy who died in the house and told you the story of him but his name was arthur diamond we called him little diamond and anything that went missing anything at all we'd be like diamond go back and it would appear back like that um like shadows as well if i see the shadow it was normally a little but like a kid who who i would see but there was an also there was another guy i can't remember his name cannot for the life of me cannot remember his name i'm pretty sure we called him walter something like that we'd call him um and he was apparently a lodger in the house we suspect he lived he lived in the back bedroom and we suspect he's the one who was chilling and living in the back bedroom when we were there um and giving off that like thing but he died by he was working in the docks which was literally again like two minutes away from our house he died there um with his on his horse and cart or something happened to him something tragic there anyway um so yeah like i don't know the things that we, things that I experienced, I just cannot explain. There's millions of things I could sit here all day and make like a two hour video explaining to you everything that I experienced in that house. And I, I miss it. Literally, I miss it. Like this house is so quiet compared to like what happened down in that house. And I really wish I got a medium or something in to that house when we left to actually tell me whether or not that something was there because i don't know it was there was just loads loads of stuff happened 
Like you'd hear stuff, people walking around upstairs. You'd hear someone walking down the stairs and there'd be no one down the stairs. You know, doors would open, there would lights, lights would flicker. There was so much like shadows as well. And I, I, I don't know, you get used to it. You do get used to it. And you know, like you almost don't pay attention to it unless you really want to as well. Like I would tell people, oh, my house is haunted and I'd have something happen to me while they're there. And they're like, are you okay? Because they're not, they're not paying attention to it. But I was always paying attention to it. I think that's what the problem happened is that I was always paying like full attention to what was going on inside the house if if that makes sense so yeah yeah there's so much honestly there's so much in that house which i could i really wish i documented a lot of it i really do wish i documented a lot of it but at the time it was like it happened so quick it was like you never had time to get your phone out and when i did try to with like the lights in the kitchen when i did try to it would stop instantly stop and it's like i don't want to be recorded but it was creepy the fact that I found his grave, um, but whoever was haunting the house, whoever was there in that house, they weren't there to hurt. Like, when people say, you know, poltergeist, okay, when people say, oh, there's a poltergeist, I, my personal experience and my personal thought of a poltergeist, it's not that they are the devil, it's not that they're evil, it's not that they're out there to hurt you and they're ghosts that can move stuff so they can hurt you. They're not evil things. I think they got a name, I think the name comes from the film. I think when people mention a poltergeist they get scared because of the film. But I, what a poltergeist really is in my eyes is a ghost or a spirit that is energised enough to be able to move things in a way that other ones can. So, you know, you've got like a normal ghost and they can make little noises or they can, you know, s communicate with you through spirit boxes and this kind of thing. But a poltergeist is someone who is physically able to move an object, who is physically able to touch you. I've never ever been hurt. Hum <laughs> I've never hurt in that house, but I was, I was touched. I was, you know, things would move around the house. And if that is the case, then we had a poltergeist in that house, but it wasn't evil. Like an energy, a ghost, a poltergeist is a ghost that is energized enough to be able to move things. Everyone has different experiences. Some people say the poltergeists are evil. Some people say the poltergeists are nasty and they, they, they're just like one of the most evilest ghosts that go. But no, my personal experience is that they are just an energized ghost that has the energy to be able to move things physically without wanting to hurt you, if that makes sense. I don't know. I'm not a ghost expert. I'm just saying, like, I've had a lot of experience with ghosts. I've had friends who are ghosts. <laughs> now I sound crazy. Um, but I think one thing as well, when I started urban exploring, so if you don't know, before I'd done reactions, I was doing... Before I was doing reactions, I was doing a lot of urban exploring. Now, while I was urban exploring, there were... I visited loads of places, and there was only about five times that I ever, ever, ever experienced some sort of paranormal activity in these in these urban exploring places. I was mainly going for the place, not for the paranormal, but there were times like in closer to the end of when we stopped para um, urban exploring, we were there for the paranormal more than anything. And there was only about five times where we actually physically got anything compared to what I got in my house. So I don't know. I, I miss it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, guys. I miss it. I hope you enjoyed this video, though. I just wanted to share this little story with you. So many people have asked me, it's like since doing my other video the other day, so many of you guys asked me if I could do a little video of just going through things that happened to me because I said in there that I've had paranormal experiences. I've had other paranormal experiences, but I'm not willing to share these online because of personal reasons because of family um and i don't want to i don't want to do that to people that i love like some stuff i need to keep offline and one of the paranormal experiences the first ever one i ever had and the one that really like made me believe i <clears throat> i cannot share that like it is too it's too personal so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video as i said there are millions of reasons why this could have been happening. I'm not saying that my house is haunted. I'm not saying the ghosts are real. I'm not saying that paranormal exists. That's all I'm saying is what I experienced it. I am going to class as paranormal. What I experienced, I am going to class as a ghost because I believe in it. 
If you don't believe in it, no problem at all. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a message down below if you've ever, ever experienced anything paranormal. Paranormal. Share your stories with me, guys. I'll read them over. And if you want to, I can do like a story time kind of thing and explain more. Or I can go into detail about other things. I can, you know, I can do different things and we'll figure something out, guys. So if you do enjoy this video, let me know down below. I'll see you in the next video. It's been your girl. Peace. Bye, guys.